Good morning. What a peaceful morning. Once there was a monk who was an expert on Diamond Sutra. What is a Diamond Sutra? Look at the screen on the wall. That's the Diamond Sutra. <coughs> Spoken by Shakyamuni Buddha about 2,500 years ago. And he carried the only copy of Diamond Sutra on his back. And he was widely sought after for his reading and insight into the Diamond Sutra. And was very successful at profounding his deep insight, not to only monks and masters, but to the lay people as well. So he was so proud of it understanding the Diamond Sutra. Thus the people of the, that reason came to know of the Diamond Sutra, and as the monk was traveling on a mountain road, and one day he came upon an old lady selling tea and cakes. The hungry monk would have loved a refreshing sack, but Allah, he had no money. He told the old women, I have upon my back a treasure beyond knowing, Diamond Sutra, you know? Diamond Sutra. See, if you give me some tea and cakes, I will tell you the great teaching of Diamond Sutra. The old woman knew something about Diamond Sutra herself and proposed her own bargain, okay? If you will reply a simple question, I will give you tea and cakes, and the monk readily agreed because he understood he knew everything about Diamond Sutra. Okay, yeah, go ahead. And the old woman said, in the Diamond Sutra, Shakyamuni Buddha said, it is impossible to grab the mind of the past, the mind of the present, the mind of the future, now, you wanted to eat these cakes. Are you going to eat with the mind of the past, with the mind of the present, or with the mind of the future? Let's repeat one more time the question. The monk wanted to eat tea and cakes. The question is, are you going to eat with the mind of the past, with the mind of the present, or with the mind of the future? No answer occurred. The monk took the pack from his bag and got out of the Diamond Sutra and began to find the answer. As he was trying to find the answer, the old woman began to pack up everything to go home for her day and said, what a poor monk. What a poor monk. You eat the cakes with your mouth. <laughs> then <coughs> she left the hungry monk. So, <clears throat> when we attach to something or anything, we sometimes find the answer in the wrong place. Here I have a question. 
Where does the Buddha come from? We are facing the great teaching spoken by Shakyamuni Buddha. So where does the Buddha come from? Probably you heard the story about Shakyamuni Buddha. He came from one of the heavens, Tosol heaven, but it's a story. So just think rationally, where does the Buddha come from? Mike? Where does the <laughs> Buddha come from? Mm -hmm. oh, your, our heart? Okay, okay. Okay, how about brother? You are next. Wow, yeah. You are, yeah, three of you are more intelligent than me. <laughs> the Buddha comes from his mother. <laughs> Am I wrong? The Buddha comes from his parents. Where are you come from? Where are you from? Are you come from the same place as the Buddha or different place? The Buddha comes from his parents, not only the Buddha. All living beings in this universe come from their parents. You and I all come from our mothers and fathers. Then do you think does the Buddha come from only from the parents? For 10 months, the mother eats delicious food, fresh air, clean water, sunshine, bright sunshine. So the Buddha comes from with the nature, the nature of heaven and earth. Then do you think the Buddha comes to us only from the nature of heaven and earth and parents? He comes from Supporters, helpers, doctor, nun, driver, cook, farmer, merchant. The Buddha comes from fellow beings. Last question. Then the Buddha comes from only fellow beings, the nature, heaven and earth, and parents? Without the law of birth and death, the Buddha can come to us. Without the law of relationship, the Buddha can come to us. In the teaching of the Buddha, we learn that this is because that is. This is like this because that is like that. It is so simple but very, very deep. This is like that because that is like that. Because the other things are 
this thing is because the other things are like, this thing is like this. We say the law of relationship, cause and effect. Without the law of cause and effect, the Buddha can come to us. Mr. Ting Nahan, all of you know, Mr. Ting Nahan once suggested that visualize the ocean with a multitude of waves. So imagine you are a wave. Imagine that we are a wave on the ocean and surrounding as are many, many waves. So imagine we are a wave surrounding many, many other waves. If the wave looks deeply within herself or in ourselves, we will realize that our being there depends on the presence of all other waves. The wave coming down and coming up, big and small, depend entirely on how the other waves are. We practice meditation, chant, or prayer. We practice to touch ourselves, inner self. When you touch yourself, you touch the whole. You touch everything. When you are capable to touch yourself deeply, you touch other dimension, the dimension of the true reality. What is true reality? You are connected to whole, this big, great universe. You are the being of interbeing with others. Mr. Sutesan, the founder of One Buddhism, says this reality, being of interbeing, this reality, is grace, fundamental grace. We recite Dharma Gaya Buddha for full grace as we pray every Saturday. In Pali world, Dharma means truth or reality. Kaya means body. So physical body, Rupa Kaya. Mental body, Nama Kaya, some source of body, true body, reality body, Dharma Kaya. Dharma Kaya Buddha. True body, reality body. And Dharma Kaya reveals through the patterns, through the nature of heaven and earth, fellow beings and laws. This is for full grace. We pray Dharma Kaya Buddha, the true reality Buddha, for full grace, the fundamental grace, which makes all beings, all things, let them be, let it be. The Buddha comes from for full grace. Purple grace comes from whole, one big universe, everything, not only the Buddha. We all come from the whole of big, great universe, everything. Not only human beings, all living beings, the tears, trochees, Birds living in the property of one Dharma Center, all living beings from one big universe. That's why we are all brothers and sisters. That's why one is whole, whole is one. 
By practice, we learn how to be alone completely. How to be alone completely. At the same time, how to be together with others freely. Together both. How to be alone completely at the same time. How to be together with others freely. Once a friend of mine who is the minister of Presbyterian Church told me, Oh, Youngin, if you want to go to heaven with me, I can ask a favor to my God. <laughs> oh, no, 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 don't do that, please. I don't want to go to heaven because there will be nothing I can do in heaven. But if I go to hell, there will be many things I can do. So, oh, don't, don't, don't do that. And do you know, nowadays, there are not many people in heaven because the people allowed to live in heaven has moved, moved to hell to volunteering, <laughs> cleaning, planting flowers, trees, building meditation centers. air c o n d i t i o n e d settlement, and to teach, you know, Dharma study. So imagine if the people who are allowed to live in heaven move to hell and live happily. Is it hell or heaven? Where is heaven? Where is the place where the Buddha comes and goes? Shakyamuni Buddha says in the Sutra, Sutra of Nirvana, Scripture of Nirvana, Buddha is compassion. So, the Buddha comes from compassion. Where is heaven? Where is a dosol? Heaven? Heaven is a place where loving kindness and compassion are fulfilled. So, the place we sit, the place you live, the place you work, must become heaven. I once read this story. A mother had eight cancer surgeries, eight times cancer surgeries. The surgeries started with underlying and you know, underlying cancer, and the cancer spread to colorectal cancer. So he had more surgeries and chemotherapies. You know how hard the process, six times chemotherapies. And then stomach cancer occurred, then breast cancer, lung cancer occurred. A total of eight times surgeries and chemotherapies. But amazing thing is, she woke up every time after the anesthesia, after you know, operation, She woke up every time. Every time after very, very hard operation and chemotherapies, she survived. And her doctors wonders what made her so strong and how she could overcome the hard, the hard, painful situations. The reason was Her son. She had a son who was handicapped physically and mentally. When the boy was born, the doctor told her, "Oh, this boy could live just for three years." And then her husband ran away, so she had to walk. 
She began to do whatever she could do to buy her boy's medicine. Every morning she left the baby at home, wrapped in a blanket, and went out to walk. And the baby had to stay alone in the blanket until she returned. After waiting and waiting and waiting for 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours, when she returned home, the boy welcomed with a happy smile. The boy didn't cry, smiled at her. The mother had to leave for the baby. Sometimes she was sick. Sometimes she wanted to give up her life. Sometimes she tried to commit suicide, but she couldn't. Every time when she was brought into the operating room, she wanted to give up. But her son's smile had to wake up every time, again and again. Although the boy couldn't talk, couldn't speak out, the smile, her pain and suffering melted away as she saw the smile, physical, physical pain and mental suffering melted away like the snow is melted by the sun. And when the boy turned 20 years old, he wrote a birthday card, the first card, the first writing for his mother. It contains three words. Mom, thank you. As I read, as I read the story, I sighed. May a Buddha comes to this world to save the mother as a handicapped son. The boy may be a Buddha came to this world to save the sick mother. One person is not only one person. The one person is a whole and everything. We are here to look into ourselves by practice, by being centered. We touch ourselves step by step more and more deeply. When we touch ourselves, inner self, we touch whole and everything. When we are capable to touching ourselves deeply and touching others deeply, we touch the dimension, other dimension, the dimension of Buddha, the dimension of the true reality, in one sound, we see every morning, every Saturday. So we come from whole, we come from everything, we come from Dharmagaya, Buddha, for full grace, as the Buddha comes and goes. Thank you.